This is Van Gogh's famous self-portrait. The self-portrait with bandaged ear in the Courtauld Gallery in London. And it's famous because Van Gogh's ear is so famous. Everyone knows the story of him cutting it off with a razor. And this picture, painted soon after in 1889, commemorates that tragedy. How very grisly to hack off your ear with a razor. What a strange piece of self-harming. It's a picture full of mysteries. Why does this easel look like a cross? Why is the bandage so prominent? And what's this Japanese print doing here at the back? It's this one here, Geishas in a Landscape, published in 1880 by Sato Torakio, with Mount Fuji in the distance and these beautiful geishas at the front. Van Gogh collected Japanese prints, and this was in his collection. But why include it in his self-portrait? And, of course, the biggest mystery of all, why did he cut off his ear in the first place? Van Gogh's self-portrait with bandaged ear asks a lot of questions. So it's time, I think, to start answering them. Welcome to Arles in the south of France where Van Gogh arrived by train on February the 20th, 1888, full of hopes and dreams. Unfortunately, those dreams were destined to turn into nightmares. These days, Arles is a glamorous holiday destination, somewhere chic to visit in Provence. But back in 1888, it was a bit of a dump. Small, cramped, backward. The dirtiest town in the south is how Van Gogh's painter buddy, Gauguin, described Arles. Van Gogh arrived in February and there was still snow on the ground, but it soon got warmer. Spring arrived and he began painting those beautiful views of orchards, full of happiness and hope. He painted this bridge as well, the bridge at Langlois, because, he said, it reminded him of the bridges back home. Why did he come here? Well, one of the reasons was the weather. In Holland, where he came from, the sun never glowed like it glows in Arles. Van Gogh's Arles pictures are ecstatically sunny. And how different they are from the first art he made. So glum and dark. He'd grown up in a world starved of colours and it had left him hungry for them. Another reason he came was those Japanese prints he liked so much. He wanted to find somewhere as bright and luminous as the world depicted by the artists of Japan. Those beautiful views of his of fruit trees in blossom painted in Arles when the spring came, were inspired directly by the prints of Hiroshige, 
Van Gogh's favourite Japanese master. There's a portrait of Hiroshige by his follower Kunisada, and it shows him as a Japanese monk. Because late in his life, Hiroshige retired from the world and became a Zen Buddhist. So Van Gogh got it into his mind that all Japanese artists were monks, but they lived and worked together in artistic communes. And that's what he wanted to do in Arles, to start a community of artists living and working together like Japanese Buddhists. He asked Toulouse-Lautrec to come, Emile Bernard, but in the end, only one other painter joined him here in Arles, Gauguin. And that was a big mistake. So some of the reasons for coming to Arles were noble and artistic. He wanted to start what he called his studio in the south, a school of progressive painters. But there were other reasons as well, less noble ones. When you've got the whole of the south of France to come to, why choose Arles? The short answer is because of the women. Van Gogh could have gone anywhere in the south of France, but he came to Arles because he was looking for love. Arles was famous for one thing, it's women. The women of Arles, the Arlesiennes as they were called, were supposed to be the most beautiful women in France. Bizet, the great composer of Carmen, even wrote a musical tribute to the legendary beauty of the Arlesiennes. It's the suite of gorgeous melodies you're listening to now. Unfortunately, the legendary beauty of the Arlesiennes was exactly that, legendary. In real life, they were tough, grumpy, and profoundly uninterested in Vincent van Gogh. They didn't want to talk to him, they didn't want to pose for him, and they certainly didn't want to fall in love with him. So instead, he began frequenting the local brothel in this street, paying for the love he so chronically craved. Van Gogh had a history with prostitutes. He'd always been unlucky with women. The only one he ever lived with was this sad and worn out brunette, Classina Maria Hornick, or Seen as he called her. Seen was a prostitute in The Hague, where Van Gogh had briefly studied. When he met her, she was pregnant with her fourth child. But he let her move in with him and looked after her. His family was appalled, especially his father, who was a minister in the Dutch Reformed Church. How could his son be living with a prostitute? But it was precisely because Van Gogh had had this keen religious upbringing that he could see prostitution in a biblical light. The 
for him, prostitutes were saintly figures. He called them his little good women. And the reason he did that was because of her. Ah yes, Mary Magdalene, the Bible's most alluring feminine presence, and the most famous prostitute in all of Christianity. The Bible doesn't actually say that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, an immoral sinner who mended her ways, but that's the myth about her that grew up, and it appealed mightily to so many artists through the ages. If you've read The Da Vinci Code, you'll know that the Magdalene fantasy grew and grew. She was Christ's lover, they said. She bore him a child. And their descendants are still among us now. Now, in paintings of the crucifixion, Mary Magdalene is also the woman you see at the foot of the cross, holding up the dead Christ, because she was there at the end to witness his suffering, along with Mary Cleophas and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And you can always spot the Magdalene because she's the most beautiful of the three Marys at the foot of the cross. So what's all this got to do with Van Gogh? Well, everything, actually, because just a few miles from Arles on the Mediterranean coast lies that little town over there, Le Sainte-Marie de la Mer, the Saint Mary's of the Sea. According to legend, it was here that Mary Magdalene and her companions arrived by sea in France. It happened on this very beach. As a follower of Jesus, Mary Magdalene was persecuted by the Jews and they put her and her friends on three boats with no sails, no oars and set them adrift on the Mediterranean. And they drifted across the sea till they washed up here at La Sainte-Marie de la Mer. And also just about here, Van Gogh painted one of his most charming Provençal views with some boats on the beach here at La Sainte-Marie de la Mer. It's usually seen as just an innocent boat picture. But in La Sainte-Marie de la Mer, there's no such thing as an innocent boat picture. No sails, washed up on the beach. And look where Vincent has signed his name, on this battered box. That's ended up on the beach, just like Mary Magdalene. Back in Arles, this is where he lived, in the famous yellow house. The actual building isn't there anymore, but at least we have his gorgeous painting of it. This is where he wanted to start his studio in the south. The idea came to nothing. The only other artist to join him here, briefly, was Gauguin. And it was Gauguin who triggered the events that ended with Vincent cutting off his ear. Gauguin arrived in Arles in October 1888. To prepare for the visit, Vincent had gone into the fields around Arles and picked some sunflowers, which he painted in an exquisite series for Gauguin's room. Look how they drenched it with sunshine. That was the good news. The bad news was that Gauguin was everything that Vincent wasn't. Experienced, smooth talking, and above all, 
very good with women. The two of them used to come here to the brothel, just around the corner from the yellow house, on what they called their hygiene visits. And even here, in the brothel, Van Gogh complained to his brother in a letter, Gauguin always got more for his franc than he did. And it wasn't just the prostitutes he was more successful with. Gauguin also had more luck with the Arlesiennes, notably with the woman who ran the late-night bar that Van Gogh frequented, the Café de la Gare. Yet another of the Marys who stud this story, Marie Genoux, the Arlesienne. Vincent had been trying to get her to pose for months. She always said no. But to Gauguin, she said yes. So Vincent, too, finally got to paint his Arlesienne. Just a few days before his world was turned upside down and tragedy struck. It happened on the night of December the 23rd, 1888. Van Gogh and Gauguin had been getting on each other's nerves for weeks and just a few days before Christmas, it all blew up. According to Gauguin, as he walked home that night, Vincent threatened him with a razor. Gauguin stared him down. And Vincent ran back to the yellow house, where he cut off his ear with the blade. Wrapping the severed body part in a newspaper, he took it to the brothel, where he gave it to a prostitute called Rachel, who fainted when she saw it. Why did he cut off his ear? Why did he give it to a prostitute? It's one of the biggest mysteries in art. <laughs> to solve the mystery, there's one more piece of the jigsaw we need to fill in. We need to understand what goes on up here, in the arena in Arles, when the bullfights happen. Vincent couldn't miss the bullfighting. It happened just a hundred yards from his front door in this great arena at Arles. And we know he came to the bullfights because he painted them. The busy crowd of the corrida. And look, there's Marie again, the Arlesienne. Now, one of the things that happens in a bullfight is that a matador who's been particularly successful is given the ear of the defeated bull that he's just killed. It's just cut off and given to him. And then he walks around the ring with it, holding it up proudly, a symbol of his victory. And because matadors are matadors, show-offs in tight trousers, they inevitably throw the ear that they've won up into the crowd, to the most beautiful girl that they can see. A macho end to a macho moment. So when Vincent cut off his ear on that terrible night in Arles and gave it to Rachel the prostitute at the brothel just up the road, 
he was casting himself as the defeated bull, the sacrificial victim in the battle of love. He'd come here to Arles to find his Arlesienne, but all he'd found was suffering and defeat. And that's why he painted this, his self-portrait with bandaged ear. A painting about suffering, pain and rejection. Remember, Van Gogh had been brought up in an intensely religious atmosphere. His father was a minister in the Dutch church. So he knew all about Mary Magdalene, about suffering, penitence, and pain. And it's all gone into this picture. So the easel at the back, the way it forms a cross, that's no accident. Van Gogh is identifying himself with Jesus. It's something in which he had form. A few months later, he painted a copy of a Pietà by Delacroix and explicitly gave the dead Christ his own face. In Arles, after the ear cutting, the kids would throw stones at him in the street. They'd mock him and abuse him. And the people of Arles, who love him so much these days, actually organised a petition to have him thrown out of the town. And it was signed by all the citizens he thought were his friends. Like Christ, he was mocked, rejected, despised. And that's why he painted his great self-portrait with bandaged ear. It's a hidden crucifixion. The easel at the back is his cross. And where Christ had his loincloth, Van Gogh has this grubby bandage that covers his wounds. All that's missing is the three Marys at the foot of the cross. And that's where the Japanese print comes in. This is the sketch for Rubens's Descent from the Cross. It's also here at the Courtauld Gallery. And look at the bottom of the picture. There's the three Marys at the foot of the cross, with the alluring Mary Magdalene at the center. But in Van Gogh's hidden crucifixion, the part of Mary Magdalene, the former prostitute at the foot of the cross, is being played by a geisha, a beautiful Japanese courtesan gathered here with her fellow Marys. And Mount Fuji is their calvary. A genius with a Christ complex, is comparing his suffering to the suffering of Christ. Wounded and alone, Van Gogh is saying thank you to the good people of Arles for all that they've done for him. There are a million stories in the world of art. This has been just one of them.